Hello again guys, this is John with Liquid House and today we're going to be water cooling my GTX 1080 for the win. We're going to be installing the heat killer block by Watercool. This thing is probably the best looking water block I've ever seen in my life. They do an excellent job. They're pretty small in terms of size on their company, but they're really, really nice. I personally preferred their water blocks over any other company. Their aesthetics are bar none, probably the best that I've ever seen. I do realize that I have a ton of EK block in my current rig already, uh, and that's probably because back in the X79 days, the blocks that were only for this board, it's an Asus Rampage 4 Black Edition. Uh, at the time I got it, EK was the only one with blocks available. And seeing that I'm such a huge fan of water cooling everything in a rig, as you can tell, I snagged up EK water blocks during that time. And I wanted everything to match, so I got the EK Supremacy Evo for the CPU. I got the EK Monarch RAM blocks for the RAM. And then the EK MOSFET and Northbridge blocks for the board. So I do realize that that's kind of contradicting to what I'm saying with Heat Killer being the best right now. But, you know, in time, I'm going to be upgrading my hardware anyways. And by that time, I'm going to move past EK and stick with Heat Killer from then on. I absolutely love these guys. So what we're going to be doing is first we're going to drain the system. As you can tell, it's fully up and running right now. But I'm going to dust the system out because I hate working with the system that has any sort of dust in it. I've got an air compressor. We're just going to blow it out, get all the dust out of here. And we're going to tear it down. I'm going to drain the system and then take the GPU out. We're going to have a closer look at it. I'm going to take it apart and then you guys can see how a water block is really installed. And then once that's all done, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a tutorial walkthrough on bending PTG tubing to get exactly the kind of look that you can get. As you can tell, my system's a little crazy with the bends and that's, you know, I like what I like and not many people do the kind of bends that I do. I like to keep things very horizontal or vertical. I don't like to do angled at all. You know, 45s, no 30s, stuff like that. So while we're doing that, uh, you guys can see kind of how I do my two bends. So yeah, we'll uh, move forward and get this thing going. All right, guys, so I just dusted out the system. Everything is good to go. Next is going to be drain the system. What that basically entails is depending on how you loop your system, and we're going to go over this in future videos, it's always good to have a drain port. Most of the time it's good to have a fill port, but these days products are coming out with a built-in fill port of some sort, typically on the reservoir. So it's not necessarily needed to plumb into the case and like mod the case with like a fill port at the top or something like that. I've had that with uh, previous builds before, but with this one being the open sided case that it is, there is no point for me to plumb in a fill port at the top. So the fill port's just at the top of the reservoir, but we have a drain port down here that's teed off from the 560 millimeter radiator. And it goes back to the side of the case with an on-off valve and a cap. So all it's gonna be is I'm gonna be draining the system. And normally when you wanna drain your system, you know, in my case, you will get everything ready to drain. You'll open up the valve and not much comes out. And that's because the system has a vacuum. What you need to do is you need to release that pressure. So as this thing is open, I'm gonna slightly open up the top plug on the top of the reservoir, and that's gonna allow air to come in and push the liquid out. Now see, as, as you can tell, the pouring stopped. And that's because pressure from the air and the liquid inside equalized. There's as much air as there in the system as there is liquid. And so because of that, it'll slowly pour out from here on out because air is still trying to come in while there's a certain amount of liquid inside. This thing's all good to go. I'm going to start tearing it apart and water blocking it. Uh, as you can tell, the system's, I would say, 70% drained which is okay for me because I'm using this run right here. I'm gonna be swapping these with new bends because this is gonna be incorporated into the system. Um, so let's tear this apart and uh, we'll get cracking.
this thing is really sweet. So what I did here is I got everything measured up with the PTG. Now what I normally do in terms of figuring out how do I do my bends and where do I measure and stuff like that. Um, in this case, I can use this as a template. You know, I figure if it goes right there and it's the same height as that one, I can measure this one out and do the bend accordingly the same way. Uh, normally you can't really do that, you just have to do it, you know, first time, but that's okay because normally what you need to do is figure out a, a, a height to stick with. So with all these tubes right here, they're around the same height. Um, I, I like to keep it like that. I don't like to have, you know, tubes poking out way further than they should be. Um, normally what I like to do is whatever one's easiest to get to first. This one is really complicated because uh, these fittings that you have to tie down, tighten down, are actually very cool. Um, they're called Monsoon Economy fittings and they're some of my favorite fittings of all time. They actually came out with a version 2 and I have messed with them uh, personally at Zydax when I was working there. Uh, we had just got them in and I instantly, I couldn't wait. I had to tear the box apart, look at them, how they're, how they're manufactured and stuff like that. And I really liked the fact that um, they increased the collar height and then they added another O-ring in there. So you have super high collar height. You also have double seal and wiggles less. So you don't have to worry about maybe transporting your system, you know, here and there without rigid tubing coming undone because I know it can be a little bit finicky compared to soft tubing. Soft tubing has the, the flexibility to, you know, be transported and it can move around or whatever, but rigid tubing is kind of, you can't really mess with it. But with Monsoon's uh, version two economy fittings, uh, I suspect that you could take a system to, you know, multiple lands without ever really having to worry about uh, your hard line getting undone or leaking on the way there. Really excited to start using that stuff relatively soon. I'm going to do a couple builds with those. I'm only going to use those fittings because honestly, through my experience, I only really trust those fittings. So to get started with this bend, you're going to have to get uh, two, a two bending kit. And like it's been said on YouTube many times before, um, there are many different companies that make them nowadays. I stick to the Monsoon ones. Their dies are really nicely made, and the mandrels. It, the mandrel comes. I think. I think this is a foot. Might be a little bit more. Maybe 14 inches. But what I do is I do a hybrid of measuring with this and then doing it by eye. Obviously, if you look in, you can't really see how I could stick a die in there and measure everything out and bend it the way that I did. And so what I do is I use this as like a baseline, and uh, once I start figuring out, okay, you know. Bends need to be a certain amount of height. Okay, so I'm always going to go for, you know, this much height before I do a 90 degree bend in between blocks. For me, it's easier to visually see in my head how this bend is going to react if I bend it a certain way within the, the, the space that it can fill. It's kind of hard to explain, but I mean, the basics aren't, aren't too difficult to understand. Uh, to start this bend though, we're going to slip the mandrel in the tube, okay, just like this. We'll get started on bending this run, so it's going to go from the CPU block to the GPU block. The trick when you're bending tube is you have to get the whole length that you're even possibly bending hot. So say your bend, and you figure you have it right here, and it goes, you rotate it, and it goes to here, so it's about an inch, inch and a quarter. Now you have that length, right? If you have that length and you only heat up that, it's going to bulge at the very ends because when you're coming around, the tube can sometimes stretch when you're forcing the, the bend too much. And so that's why I like to go about half an inch on both sides, heating it up. That way you have full control of how the bend's gonna go. You're not worried about, oh, I didn't heat up the tube long enough and oh, I have to reheat it. Um, PTG is pretty durable with reheating the tube and doing it again. I would definitely not suggest that doing it with acrylic. Acrylic cracks and disintegrates within one and a half tries of reheating it. So I wouldn't, I don't recommend acrylic anymore. It does have a certain 
shine to it that the PETG doesn't have, but for how durable the PETG is, I highly recommend it. Um, that's, that's just my personal experience. So let's get down to bending this too. Now what I like to do is if this is the first end I'm gonna start bending, I like to keep the mandrel as close to the very edge as possible. That way I have more grip to pull this out. Because I'm only doing a couple simple bends, I'm not really worried about getting this thing looped up. Um, another trick I have learned is uh, stretching the mandrel a little bit and then pouring some water in there. And then once the mandrel um, compresses back down to how it was, water travels throughout the tube and that way you can able to pull it out without having to get the mandrel wet ahead of time. Because my bend is going to be a little unique, I'm doing a 90 and a 90 right after it. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit longer on heating it up in terms of the length. Now doing 90s, uh, there's a few people on YouTube that love to do it by hand and are really good at it. Jay, I'm talking to you. You're, you're magnificent at doing it by hand, but I can't do 90s by hand. I'm sorry, but I need a, I need to die for that. So here's here we're gonna go. We're gonna start with this. Get the 90 going. But because I have the rest of this heated up, I'm gonna bend again and kind of do it by hand. So and that's where the tricky part comes. Because it's still warm, I still have a chance to reheat it. And without it having to affect how it's going to look in terms of rippling or kinking. I'm just going to hold it up and see what we're working with right now. It's easy for me to line things up so I can eyeball it and that's how I do my bends most of the time. Now the radius of this bend is a little inconsistent so we're going to make sure that it is consistent throughout the entire bend. But we also want to make sure that everything else lines up straight. So just keep it warm so you're absolutely sure that that's the bend you want to make. The bend is going to do and look how you want it to be. So, as I was doing this, I had discovered that the tube is sitting about an inch away from the fitting that needs to go in it. Now this is where these dies come in. These dies are really helpful for deciphering where the 90 is going to start and go right into the fitting, at least for this situation. Now, because of that, this tube is a little too long, but that's okay because that's what you want. You want the tube to be a little too long. Uh, it's a lot better to go too long than it is to go too short. Uh, I've had very long runs where it's going all over the case and I'm down to the last bend and it's too short and so I have to trash it and start all over again and that run probably took me about an hour to do. So it's always good to cut a little long and then trim down from there. I'm pretty confident this thing is going to look pretty good when it's all done. Uh, but I do need to trim the tube before I even start bending it. Now this is where this can save a little bit of hassle. At this point, I am done with this bend right here. Everything looks good for me. I'm okay with it. I'm just going to pull it out now. See? And that's it. The bend is going to go in. Sit right there. And as it comes in, it's going to have to kind of change lanes a little bit so I can move over to go into this fitting. Okay, so I trimmed the tube a little bit more. It had been going about two inches more past this, so I trimmed it. 
Um, I actually used some water, put some water in there to make it a little bit lubricated and I put the tube back in. It's really difficult to get the silicone insert, the uh, mandrel, back into a couple bends, like squeeze it through the bends. Uh, it's difficult but not impossible. You just have to kind of like work at it. Because of that, I have a little bit more headroom to work this tube to bend right into this fitting. Now what I had done is I had used the mandrel, or I'm sorry, the die, lined up with these markers right here to find out exactly where the 90 is gonna start with the bend. I had since then marked it with a dry erase. So I made a dry erase mark right here so where the 90 is gonna start bending. Um, I still went a little bit long. I'm probably gonna have to trim it again, but you'd be surprised how much of the tube length is used to make that 90, to go throughout the entire 90. It's a little bit longer than you think. And I mean, this is, I, I believe an inch, inch and a half, but even then it seems to always be more than it is, uh, it appears to be. And so because of that, I left it just a little bit long. Uh, so now we're going to make this 90 degree bend coming outward and hopefully we can make something work out so it goes right into this fitting. I might have to have it change lanes a little bit, but I'm okay with that. Okay, so now... Things are a little bit off, but that's okay. What I like to do is heat it up again without the mandrel in it, just enough to where you can slightly move the two to be exactly where you wanna be. That's how I did these, but I heated this up just enough to where I could move this around and have it to fit exactly where it needed to be. Uh, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up in the system so right now, it's a little, it's pushing on the video card just a little bit. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat up this area and then I'm slowly gonna like make the tube go exactly where I need to be just the slightest little bit because it's almost perfect. Now it is very dangerous doing the bending without uh, mandrel insert because it can kink up very easily. There's no uh, insert holding the interior diameter. So I gotta be very careful with this. <laughs> To do is this one run left. Uh, it's actually pretty easy. It's around the same exact height as the video card, which is what I was really hoping for. So I might just do a 45-45 lane change. I know in the beginning of this video I said I really don't like doing 45s or 30 degree angles. I like doing everything a 90s horizontal vertical completely, nothing in between. But I think it's going to be okay. I'm not really that worried about it. Uh, I think it's still going to look really good. So let's get this thing going here. I'm going to do the lane change on this end so that kind of mirrors this right here, this little lane change that I've just finished up. Okay, so I got everything all good to go. I um, ended up having to rebend uh, this last run real quick because uh, this was too shallow of a chain, uh, lane change. I needed to go more aggressive. So I got that all done. Things are all good to go. Everything's straight and level. Uh, it looks pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm okay with it. Um, I think it'll look a lot better when everything is filled up and uh, lit up. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting things back together. I still got to put the case fan back in. And then I got to fill up this bad boy and we'll do a leak test. 
a, a leak test for about 12 to 18, 24 hours, normally overnight and then some. That way I can make sure this thing's not gonna leak on me if I power it all up. It's pretty easy to leak test. I'll get into that in a little bit. But first I'm gonna put this thing back together and we should be all good to go. that about does it hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm going to try and edit it so where it's not as long because this took a lot longer than i thought it would this is my first real uh tutorial video of some sort i guess it was a hybrid between a tutorial and kind of like a build log video um hope it was informative in some way like i said first time ever doing a video like this before so i'm going to try and edit it the best i can shorten it so it's not too boring and too tedious so um, it looks great I'm really happy with how it turned out I doubt it's gonna overclock any better than it already was because Pascal's pretty stubborn with that but uh, at least I don't have to worry about high temps or the loud fans from the air cooler anymore pretty excited about it I'm gonna get in some photos uploaded on the Instagram page really appreciate you guys watching and if you can subscribe like or share this video and uh, I'll see you guys next time